So I just want to thank each and every one of you to North Hollywood, our Victory Outreach North Hollywood Midweek Momentum. Amen. And, you know, first and foremost, I just want to give, you know, uh, just my Lord, my personal Lord and Savior, just I want to give him all glory and all thanks just for always being there for me, even when I haven't been there for him. Second, I want to thank Pastor Ray and Sister Crystal and all the leaders before us. I just want to say thank you for always saying yes and amen as well. Um, third, I want to thank my family, and I want, to thank, I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to share into you guys' heart. Amen. So, the, for, so first, I want to start off with this scripture, and it, it is in Romans 1.16. If you guys could please open up your Bibles or your Bible app. And I'll give you a little bit of time. So it reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is, in the, it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. So what does that mean? It means not to be ashamed of, of being a Christian. It means not to be embarrassed to tell someone Jesus loves you. To tell someone, hey, let me bring you to salvation. Let me save you. Because Jesus is coming, amen? And he's coming pretty fast. Everything's happening like in the Bible, you know, our weapon. Everything, that's, it, it, what it says right there, it's happening, you know? And it's, and it, and it's, and it's, peeling before our eyes, you know? So don't be ashamed, you know, because he, he, he is coming and, and we, you know, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not something to play with. It's not something to, to, you know, be like, oh, man, they're going to call me a Bible thumper or they're going to, you know what I mean? Be like, oh, here comes that Jesus freak. I'll be like, yeah, I am a Jesus freak. And, like, what's going on? Like, what's happening? Let me save you. As a matter of fact, let me pray for you. You know what I mean? Let's, let me pray for you, you know? Like, it'll be okay. You'll be all right. You'll survive. You might be sweating a little bit, but amen, you know? So just don't be ashamed. You know, believe in God and trust me. You know, God believes in you and he trusts in you. So with that, if you guys could please close your eyes and bow your heads as I pray. In Heavenly Father, I just thank you just for allowing me to share tonight, for allowing me to just pour out into my brothers and sisters for just allowing me to just, man, just to be here, Lord, just to be here first and foremost, just to be here with, with my family, Father, just to be here, just to serve you, Father. Uh, I, just, I, I just thank you for everything, Lord. May you move tonight. May, may you just work in each and, every, each and every one of our hearts, Lord. May you be in the midst at all times, Lord. I thank you and I praise you in your mighty Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So the title for this message is called Sweet Tooth. Mm. Yes, yes. I know it's a little different. It's a different type of title. But being different is who we are. Amen. We can't be like the world. We got to be different. So that has made me wonder because we're so different. That has made me wonder. And just think, as a Christian, how good we really have it, but how difficult we really have it as well. And I don't know if you have thought about that. You know, like, really, have you, had, like, have you sat down, you know, and just put your phone down and really think, like, man... We really have it good, but at the same time, we really have it difficult. Or have you taken your Christianity for granted? I know sometimes I do. I know sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the blessings that, that the Lord has given me or the trials and tribulations that I have passed because the Lord has given me strength and courage, I have taken for granted. And sometimes I want to think as a human I want to think that I did it on my own or I could do it on my own or, you know, I don't need him, you know, and I start praying less and worshiping less and worship my, worshiping 
more for myself. So, see, I want to let you know why we have it good. Well, because we have been saved. We have been changed. We are not the same like we used to be. We are, we are not part of this world anymore. We are not suffering like we used to. We are important. We mean something to someone now. But most of all, you and I are loved by God. We're loved, you know? And that's why we have it so good, because God has changed us. God has saved us, you know? And that's something that we just need to glorify each and every day, you know? Because we, we're not suffering anymore or waking up, checking our phones, calling, you know, the person that we're with 20,000 times. Where you at? Where you been at? Why haven't you been to my phone? Why aren't you answering me? Why haven't you came home? No, none of that. We don't have to worry about none of that. Or waking up trying to get our next fix. Or waking up trying to get our next beer, you know? Our next 12-pack. Our next 211, you know what I mean? Like, it, that stuff that we don't have to worry about anymore. If anything, we just, we wake up happy. We wake up like, man, thank you, God, for just another opportunity. Thank you, God, for another, just another day. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be with my kids, to be, you know, to able to work, to able to, to touch, see, talk, smell, taste, you know, feel. Like, thank you, you know, because sometimes we take it for granted. And I can say, I took mine for granted, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm a right-handed, and, and it's hard sometimes to, well, it's hard right now all the time to write. And it's like, man, you don't know how much you need something until it's gone or you can't use it. You know, it's, it's tough, you know, it's, it's hard, trust me. So, but because we are all that, that is why it is so difficult as well. You know, for, you know, what is so difficult for us as well, because now we have the attention of the person who despises us the most with a passion. The one who will talk to you in a man or woman that you've been waiting on or wanting. You know, but they're still in the world. That one man or that one woman, like, man, now he's talking to me. Now she's talking to me. You know, but the flip side is they're still clubbing. They're still drinking. They're still using drugs. They're still doing this. So what are you going to do? Are you going to convert? Are you going to be like, uh, going to the club won't hurt me one day. Um, you know what I mean? Missing church one day is not going to hurt. Um, one shot won't hurt. You know, why? To, just to satisfy the person? Instead of tell, tell them, no, you want to come meet me. You want to come talk, come meet me where I'm at. Come to church. Come meet my family. Or that one dream job, that one dream job and they finally call you. That one dream job you've always been wanting. And they finally give you that call. Hey, Mr. Lugo, we got that a position open for you. You still want it. Man. And the pay is good, but the pay is so good that you only have to work the, de the three days. You only have to work three days. And guess what three days you have to work? The church days. The days that you have to come to church, that you really need to get a hold of God. The, you know, the days that you really need to hear the word, to fellowship, to be surrounded by people like you and I that will uplift each other, that will pray for each other, that will be there for each other. And those are the days that you have to miss. And also, he'll whisper in your ear to make other things your priority. You, you guys fill in the blank. I don't live with you. You know, you guys fill in the blank. What makes you guys, what, what, what priority do you guys have to, you know, to give thanks to the Lord? to give time to the Lord? Is it the gym? Is it a Dodger game? You know? What is it? Is it hiking? You know? You guys, you guys fill in the blank. Again, I don't live with you. See, the enemy is like a candy. 
knowing that you have that sweet tooth, he will give you everything that tastes and looks bomb. And he'll make you think that it won't hurt. But in reality, it will destroy your teeth. And it will make you go through pain and hardship. Yes, it will. But how many of us can say our God is a gentleman? And he will let you eat all that candy in the world, but he will tell you, slow it down, son. Slow it down, sister. Relax, my daughter. You know, no more. But sometimes we don't like to listen. We're cabezones. We're hard-headed. We don't like to listen. If we didn't listen to our mother and our father, you know what I mean, that were physically there, imagine someone that we cannot see. Imagine our, our father that we can't see, like, you know, we'll say, oh, you know what, it's okay, you know. A little bit more won't hurt. But until we come back with silver teeth, man, remember those kids with the silver teeth? Uh, silver teeth activities, man. Shh, come on, somebody. You know, like your old friends that used to eat a lot of candy back in the days? And because you ate so much candy, your front teeth start to cane. Now your teeth are in pain. And the enemy's in the corner laughing at you. See, this is why, you know, like Pastor said, you know, we have to ask God not to take away the candy, but to give you the power to overcome it, to give you the strength to surpass it, to give you the confidence to say no, not right now, not anymore, to give you the power to walk away, to give you the discipline to walk that path that the Lord has others made for you before see family sometimes our sweet tooth gets the best of us but we must fight that temptation like in Matthew 26 41 and it reads watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the flesh is weak you know, that's why every day we say, put your flesh into submission. Every day we say, you got to get into prayer. You got to get a hold of God because, come on, we, we lose battles. That's speaking real. We lose battles. We're only human. We cannot, we cannot beat, every, we cannot win every battle. So it's okay to admit, like, hey, I lost a couple. You know what I mean? It's all right. You know, and I could stand before you and say, I have lost a couple. I'm not perfect, and I never will be perfect, and I never will, I say I'll be perfect. Amen? But we have to remember, we have the power to fight it off. We just have to get a hold of God, and we have to remember who we serve, and we have to remember who is our Father. If Chris, if you could uh, play the worship music. As tonight, um, it is prayer night, and... This is the time where we get a hold of God. This is the time where that sweet tooth is getting the best of you. Well, this is the time where you'd be like, God, give me that strength that I need. Give me that discipline that I need. Give me that just courage to say, you know what? No, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I can't go out with you. I'm sorry. I can't be with you. I'm sorry. I can't do this. I'm sorry. You know, man, that Dodger game is cool, but it's on a, it's on a Wednesday. I can't do it. It's on a Sunday. I'm sorry. The Steelers were paying. I have, to, I have to give it up. Be like, no, Steelers, I can't. Sunday. Jesus comes first, you know? Amen. That's just what it is, you know? Um, and e even, even little things, you know? Even the little things that, like buying shoes. <sighs> I have a struggle on buying shoes. That's my sweet tooth. I have to say no sometimes, you know? I'm like, man, no. No, Jordans. Not right now, <laughs> you know? But... It's a, but it's a learning process. It's a process where, uh, you know, you, you just, you have to have God the center of it, you know. Um, and yesterday in my life group, I was, I, I taught uh, a little, a little, little something. And then it, it was just talking about the five fingers, you know. And it was talking about, you know, the pinky is the teacher. You know, because it could get into places that no other people, no other person can. Excuse me. It's talking about the ring finger, which that is the pastor. 
which he's married to the church, and he marries couples, and he sees family grow. He, the middle finger, which that is the longest finger in your palm, which that's the evangelist, that's the one that could go far and could get into play, good, go farther than anyone else. That, that is why it's your longest finger. Then you got your index finger, which is the prophet, which shows the way. And then you got the thumb, which is the apostle, the leader. But in the center of it all is God, which is your palm. And you have to let God lead you to anywhere you want, anywhere he wants. It could be anything. It could be servanthood. It could be love. It could be hosting. It could just be that one person to be, you're that bridge, you know, that could connect people. And from there, like, okay, I did my thing. Cool, and on to the next. But you guys have to remember, God has to be the center of it all. Because if he's not, then what's going to happen? Everything's going to crumble. You know, when you put your hand to a fist, you could cause damage. And we need to cause damage to the kingdom, for the kingdom. Amen? So as Chris plays the music, um, if you guys could all please stand with me. And like I said, just keep God centered. You know, you, the, the altars are open right now. And you guys should just come and, and just get a hold of God. Get a hold of God. Reach out to God. Because I know that sweet tooth, it's, it's very hard to give up. I know that sweet tooth, it's... It's just difficult to say no sometimes. So the altars are open. You could take your positions as well and just, you know, cry out to God and he'll meet you.